So um, our next presenter is um, Aaron Cajal, who's a second year education fellow at the Institute of Southern Jewish Life in Jackson, Mississippi. As an education fellow, Aaron travels to seven different Southern congregations three times a year in order to help implement the ISJL religious school curriculum, as well as lead programs for religious school students, teachers, and the larger community. She grew up in Augusta, Georgia, and is very fond of the Jewish community in her hometown. Erin received her bachelor's degree in both history and social studies from the University of Georgia in May 2011, and has grown both professionally and personally uh, through her student teaching and thesis research on Southern Jewish women and the civil rights movement. So um, Erin has the opportunity to work with several different congregations and use this material in, in a variety of ways. And she's going to share with us a little bit more about that work now. So Erin, you can unmute yourself and take it away. All right. Thank you, Etta. Of course. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so I just want to preface um, my presentation by saying that I have a very unique setup where um, I'm not designing a course um, devoted to a choice relating to American Jewish women of my choice, but um, it's more um, me, um, you know, advocating for the materials of the JWA and um, getting my communities excited about the different resources that the JWA has to offer. Um, that being said, um, you know, I um, I call up my communities to plan my visits and then um, I ask them if there's any time for me to take a lesson from living the legacy and use it um, for an adult education or to use it with um, the students who attend the religious school. Um, so um, this setup presents a few challenges. Um, some of them are that I can't predict sometimes who's going to be there. Um, since I visit three times a year, I'm not as familiar with the students or adults I'm going to be teaching. Um, and the congregations all have different needs. Um, but I go into these communities feeling confident that the lessons are exciting and relevant and are going to engage the audience that I'm going to have. Um, so I just wanted to explain that before we move on. Next slide. Okay, so the first time I got to use Living the Legacy this year, I was in Brownsville, Texas with um, Temple Beth L. Um, so this was interesting because um, they have a tourist study um, Saturday morning after services, and um, the education director for the community asked me if I would like to um, lead an adult ed of my choice during that time period. Um, and this was pretty cool because they're a new community this year. Um, so I decided to take Unit 1, Lesson 1 from Jews in the Civil Rights Movement, which um, focuses on identity. Um, so it includes an introduction talking about the different ways that we define identity and um, what factors in our environment shape um, the way we view our identity. Um, so the group on average was about 75 um, and up. Um, so that was interesting too because um, you know, the materials are intended for um, high schoolers, and high schoolers are still grappling with their identity. And so, you know, a, a lot of these questions, you know, this age group was like, you know, I, I figure this out by now. You know, um, you know, I, this this question doesn't necessarily apply to my age group, but the the documents, the materials, gave them a great. Um, you know, springboard for them to discuss how growing up in Texas shaped their identity, gave them time to reminisce about what it was like to be younger. Um, I thought this was a really cool quote um, to share with you all um, that I put in my slide is that one person mentioned that um, growing up in Texas, they were wearing their Judaism on the inside. Um, so I thought that was very neat. And especially um, in Brownsville, Texas, um, it's very um, um, much Hispanic um, in terms of population. Um, so there is that challenge and then also being Jewish. Okay, so the second time this year, I was in um, Williamsburg, Virginia, um, and the synagogue there is called Temple Beth L. 
Um, and so this was also a unique setup too because um, the rabbi and the educator there asked me if I wanted to um, help lead programs for their lock-in with um, their seventh through ninth graders. Um, so we were talking about different themes that we wanted to take with it and I decided that we should do a social justice lock-in. Um, so I told them about um, the Temple Board debate, um, which is also part of Jews in the Civil Rights Movement. Um, and um, the kids just loved it. Um, and this is interesting too, because it's a different age group than expected, but um, you know, the kids are very, very mature and very bright. Um, so they, they really liked it. They got into the roles. Um, and um, sorry, Aaron, I'm just it was, it was great. Aaron, I'm just gonna interrupt you for yeah. a minute. If you could just, for those uh, participants on the call who haven't seen the civil rights material, if you could just very briefly describe what the Temple Board debate lesson does, that would I think would help us understand a little bit more what this lesson was like. Sure. Um, so the lesson includes different profiles. Um, there's a rabbi, um, there's, um, you know, there, there's different um, people who are um, a part of this board. Some of them have children who are participating in this movement, um, and they have these complex motivations for why they would want to support the civil rights movement or why they would not. Um, so you get to read about the lives of these characters. The students are assigned these different profiles. Um, and from there, they engage in, in a debate and discussion. Um, and it's, it's very well laid out. Um, it gives you the order um, for um, leading the debate um, and how to hold the meeting and um, gives the students opportunity to um, raise cons and, and um, pros for, for either side. Um, and so, yeah, the, it, it's very good, um, well thought out activity. Um, and by the end of the activity, the, the students um, ultimately ruled against the civil rights movement. But um, it was interesting for them because they said that you know, if, if we were to just start, um, you know, on our own without these documents, then we would have, you know, felt like, oh, I would definitely support this movement, of course, like, no question. And, um, you know, this activity allowed them to see that there were other issues as apparent, especially if you're, if you're living in the South and, um, you know, you're in the Bible Belt and you're, and you're wanting to um, blend in with um, society. Um, so that, that was a good teaching moment for them. Um, and also I want to say that, um, um, their BBYO president was there, um, and he thought the lesson was really exciting and, and he came up to me and he said, please send me this lesson. I want to do this with the chapter. Um, so, um, I put him in contact with Etta and so I thought that was another, um, good showing that the lesson was successful and that it really spoke to and reached the students there. So next slide, please. Okay, so I haven't taught my lesson for um, my third requirement of the year yet, but um, I work with eight other um, fellows in the ISO office, and we're having a Shibuya learning session together. And I am going to select one of the Living the Legacy lessons to teach them. Um, I'm thinking community organizing. Um, it was this lesson that we did at um, the JWA conference where we got to actually experience um, a lesson full on, which was a very meaningful part of um, the four days that we that we spent at Brandeis. Um, and so, you know, we, we got to talk about the different issues that communities had to face with coming together and rallying support around this movement. Um, so I think that would be a great way to, um, you know, talk to a team about, you know, the community that we've built here. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, and also, just to conclude my presentation, um, I also want to say that besides just teaching these lessons, um, uh, JWA has um, given me support to support other communities. So not only are we visiting these communities, 
um, and we're using ISGL materials, but the communities view us as a resource. So when you are connected to other resources and, and you can advocate for them, you can tell um, other education directors about them, um, you know, it really benefits them. And um, there are different instances and ways that we went about that. We have weekly emails that we send out and newsletter articles. Um, and if there's anything concerning women, um, the JWA is mentioned a lot. Um, one fellow wrote um, a Jews in the Civil Rights Movement program relating to music using um, the go and learn materials about civil rights and Jews in music. Um, also last year I wrote um, a black history program um, using the materials from the JWA, um, putting the Temple Board debate in that as well. Um, so that's something that is, is sent out to these communities. Um, and what's also really cool is that um, learning about the civil rights movement and, and, and how Jewish women participate in this movement is especially meaningful here and for the work that we do. Because um, a lot of these communities um, that we travel to um, were impacted by it. For instance, Little Rock, Arkansas, where Central High School is located. Um, so, you know, it was another way for me to to connect to the communities I served, and I'm um, forever grateful to the JWA for that.